we're going to take this video to uh, review prime factorization. Now, if you recall, a factor is nothing more than a number that goes evenly into another number. And also, we should know that a prime number is a number that has only two factors, one and itself. So put those two together, and prime factorization is breaking a number down into only its prime number pieces. So we can use a factor tree as an efficient way of finding a number's prime factors. And while we're at it, making use of the divisibility rules that we've learned is going to make uh, growing our factor tree a little more efficient for us. So uh, let's get started. And as we go through, we'll remember um, that as we grow our factor tree, uh, we need to just find any pair of factors that make up the number, and then we can continue breaking down from there. And also, as we continue through, that when we get to a prime factor, we should circle it so it stands out for us, and then we'll list our final answer um, in the end, uh, from least to greatest, from least prime factor to greatest, and then using exponents if we see a prime factor showing up more than once. So if we start with finding the prime factorization of 630, we can tell that since the number ends in zero, that it's divisible by 10. So let's just say it's 10 times 63. So we know that right off the bat. And from here, we know both 10 and 63 are not prime factors. So we're going to split those as well. The 10, we should recognize as being two times five. And if you notice that the two is a prime factor and the five is a prime factor, uh, we've gotten to the bottom of how we can break down that side of our factor tree. The 63, we should recognize a common factor pair as being seven times nine. Now we should also recognize in that factor pair for 63 that the seven is a prime factor but the nine is not. So the nine will break down a little bit further. And the nine we know is three times three. So once we're done, we can see that our answer is two times five times seven times three times three. Now what we want to make sure that we do is to list our prime factors from least to greatest. So we're gonna start with the two. Then we're going to say times three, but since times three twice, we're going to say times three squared. So we've got the two times the three squared, and then we're going to move on to the next greatest prime factor times five, and then we're going to wrap up with times seven. And that will be our prime factorization for 630. Now, if we wanted to check that real quick, it would be real quick and easy to check. The way that we could check is I could just multiply this all back out again. So in no particular order, I'm going to multiply these numbers. I know two times five is 10, 10 times seven is 70. So I did two times five times seven, that's 70, and then I know my three squared is equal to nine, and I know those two together equals 630. So I know I have my prime factorization correct. So that's how we do prime factorization, or that's a review of prime factorization. One more time, we split our number into what we call factor pairs. That's just any two factors that multiply together to give us a given number. And we don't need to have prime factors right off the bat because as we continue growing our tree, you will see that we will naturally find our way down to what we call these low-lying branches as our prime factors. And then we'll put it all together one more time, listing from least to greatest prime factor and using exponents when we see repeated prime factors like the three times three giving us the three squared. So given that, I would like you to on your own to find the prime factorization of 264, and we'll check in further.